humanbeingbroadcasting.net. We're bringing you the information that the corporate media does not want you to know. So sit back, relax, let it go. Kick your shoes off, get your popcorn, do whatever you need to do, because here we go. HBB live and direct. There's a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart, that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Welcome. Welcome again to the Daily Mayhem Report. I am the master of many things, and today is finally Friday, March 9th, 2012. We go back into time, as always, this year, all the way back to the year 432. The Parthenon was consecrated in Athens. Now, coming back to today, status of the economy. All markets saw slight gains, uh, the Dow up just 14 points, NASDAQ close to 18 points up, and the S&P almost 5 points, but certainly not enough to compensate for the triple-digit loss we had three days ago. More news about the economy, all kinds of stuff today. First up, Greece in the headlines again. This from Newsday, Greece says it intends uh, to use legislation forcing holdouts to participate in the bond swap. So, you will take our money, and you will like it. You'll love it. Good Lord, how do they get away with it? Next up from the newser. Employees created 227,000 jobs last night. Unemployment rate unchanged at 8.3%. Always something going on. Hectic. The numbers mean nothing, really. Everybody's still hurting. Uh, more economy news. This from the Washington Post. U.S. trade deficit widened to three-year high of $52.6 billion in January as imports hit a record. Uh, U.S. trade deficit surged in January to the widest imbalance in more than three years after imports grew faster than exports. Rising oil prices helped drive imports to a record high, as did stronger demand for foreign-made cars, computers, and food products. As exports to, uh, to Europe fell, the sign that the region's debt crisis could temporarily weaken U.S. growth just as job market is strengthening. The January trade deficit widened to $52.6 billion, the Commerce Department reported today. That's up from a revised $50.4 billion in December, the biggest gap since October of 2008. And also in the headlines, and we're going to go back to Greece for this, Fitch has downgraded them again. Greek, Greek, uh, Greece rather secures the biggest debt deal in history. Uh, Greek private creditors urged Friday to take cents on the euro and the biggest debt write down in history, paving the way for an enormous second bailout for the country to keep Europe's economy from being dragged further into chaos. Greece would have risked defaulting on its debts in two weeks without the agreement, spanking turmoil in the financial markets and sending shockwaves through the 16 other countries. Uh, but Fitch still says no good, downgraded again. So that's wonderful news. Now, moving along, news about our corporate machine. The FDA in the headlines again. This according to naturalnews.com. FDA scientists sentenced to five years in prison for insider trading on drug approval knowledge. A drug evaluator at the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Center for Drug Evaluation and Research uh, for more than a decade, Cheng Yi Ling, 58 has been sentenced to five years in prison and three years of supervised release for using non-public FDA data. Good Lord, uh, you can't get rid of these people. It's ridiculous. Always something going on in the corporate machine. It, ridiculous. Uh, moving along, one of my favorite folders, Obama bullshit. Uh, something always going on with Obama that's horrible. And now it seems uh, Obama needs more aircraft. And even after he spent billions of dollars 
and the ultimate travel RV here just uh, six or eight months ago. Now the U.S. Air Force is pulling nine cargo aircraft for military operations to support President Barack Obama's stepped-up visits to campaign events. The five medium-capacity C-130s and four heavyweight C-1, uh, C-17s will be used to ferry security vehicles, armored limousines, and communication gears into cities ahead of Obama's campa campaign appearances. In the months before November, the president is expected to fly into multiple cities per week and speak at multiple sites per day. On March 8, for example, the president will fly to Richmond and then drive over to a Royals-Royce aircraft parts factory. That evening, he'll fly down to Houston, Texas. So Obama gets to tour the world at the ex uh, expense of the taxpayers. That's outstanding. Moving along, modern-day martial law. Good Lord, private purchasing of prison locks and occupancy rates. This from Ascending Star Seed, a WordPress blog. Uh, Federal Bureau of Prisons Director Harley Lappin speaks uh, during a news conference at the Thompson Correctional Facility. A uh, $250 million proposal circulated by the Nashville based Corrections Corporation of America to prison officials in 48 states has been blasted by some state officials who suggest such a program could pressure criminal justice officials to seek harsher sentences to maintain the contractuality required occupancy rates. You don't want a prison system operating with a goal of maximizing profits, it's Texas State Senator John Whitmore, a Houston Democrat an advocate for reducing prison populations through less costly diversion programs. The only thing worse is that this seeks to take advantage of some states' troubled financial position. So, beefing up the prisons, martial law, it's here. They just don't want to call it that. And now more news. Uh, this from Homeland Security Newswire. DHS is in the midst of completing its plan to establish a biometric exit system for immigrants when they leave the United States. The plan is devised amid growing concerns about terrorists who entered the country legally but continue to stay long after their visas expired. Uh, testifying before Congress on Tuesday, John Cohen, DHS Deputy Counterterrorism Coordinator, said the agency was within weeks of presenting its final plan to lawmakers. Cohen's statements come amid growing concerns about terrorists who entered the country legally but continue to stay long for their visas, uh, long after their visas have expired. Ridiculous. Ridiculous martial law. It's here. It's everywhere. In this out of the BBC, martial law doesn't just apply to the United States. China's social networks hit by censorship, study says. Chinese censors are actively targeting social media to quash discussions of banned topics, suggest research. The U.S. study gives the most in-depth look at the extent of China's policing of discussions on microblogging sites. Analysis of almost 60 million messages from China's equivalent of Twitter suggested which topics were banned. It also revealed that China tuned its censoring activity to be more aggressive in places where political unrest was high. The study reported in New Scientist by David Bamman, uh, Brendan O'Connor, and Professor Noah Smith from the Language Technologies Institute at Carnegie Mellon analyzed short messages sent via the Sina Weibo service. The public programming interface uh, to the Sina site let the trio grab 57 million messages sent between June 27th and September 30th of 2011. Three months later, they checked to see which messages disappeared from the service to identify which terms caught the attention of the censors. The work showed that the social media sensor was similar to the system overseeing Chinese web access. That system, known as the Great Firewall, stops people visiting some sites outside of China, returns no results for searches of banned terms, censors chat, and vet blogs. Banned topics include Falun Gong, spiritual movement, and human rights activist Ai Weiwei. In the similar way, the study found that messages containing these banned terms tended to be deleted from the Sina Weibo service. It also found that the censorship system could be quite nimble and react quickly when words or phrases start to assume a more political meaning. For instance, the word liangui became sensitive when it started being used as a code word for planned protest. Similarly, a word meaning asking someone to resign became sensitive in the wake of the high-speed train crash in July 2011 that killed 40 people. Mistakes by officials have been blamed for leading to the disaster. The study also found 
significant variation in how active system was in different regions of China. The Tibet, uh, in Tibet, about 50% of messages were deleted compared to 12% in Beijing and 11% in Shanghai. Now, if this isn't martial law, you tell me what is. Moving along, news about our warring world. First, to Pakistan. This is from the Idaho Press Tribune. Pakistani officials say a U.S. drone strike has killed 12 militants close to the Afghan border. No other details available. And from the BBC, Israel in the headlines. Israel launches deadly airstrikes on Gaza. Israel airstrikes on Gaza have killed at least 10 Palestinians, including a senior Palestinian militant leader, Zohair El Kwazi, Secretary General of Popular Resistance Committees, was attacked because he was planning an attack, the Israelis said. Another militant was killed with him. The Islamist Hamas movement, which runs Gaza, said at least eight more died in later Israeli airstrikes. The Israeli military said dozens of rockets were fired into Israel. They were apparently fired in retaliation for the killing of the PRC leaders. Moving along. A little bit of space news for you. This is from spaceweather.com. Another CME is heading for Earth. Sunspot AR-1429 has unleashed another strong solar flare, an M6 collapse eruption on March 9th today at 358 UT. The blast hurled a coronal mass ejection almost directly towards Earth. According to analysts at the Goddard Space Weather Lab, the CME will am- arrive March 11th at 6.49 UT, plus or minus seven hours, adding to the geometric unrest already underway. Uh, High auroras uh, still being seen around the Arctic Circle. So the sun is twisting and contorting the same as the Earth is moving along. Planet in revolt. This from the BBC. Protest Greek. Uh, Dominic Strauss-Kahn talk in Cambridge. Two people have been arrested at a protest over former International Monetary Fund head Dominique Strauss-Kahn speech to a university debating society in Cambridge. Mr. Strauss-Kahn arrived to jeers at the Cambridge Union Society venue on Friday and protesters scuffled with police. The visit was opposed by a student union group after he faced sex assault charges, which were later dropped. The society said Mr. Strauss-Kahn had a right to free speech Mr. Strauss-Kahn was invited to the Cambridge Union Society last year before the allegations about a sex attack on a chambermaid in the United States arose. They led to his resignation from the IMF, but the criminal investigation against him in New York was dropped in August. A criminal investigation on attempted rape claims in Paris were dropped in October. However, the Cambridge University Student Union Women's Campaign said the sex assault charges he had faced should have, been, uh, should have given society pause for thought about who extended its invitations to. Mr. Strauss-Kahn was ushered in through a back entrance to the Cambridge venue amid shouts of, you must be ashamed of yourself from a lone protester. Trouble broke out as Mr. Strauss-Kahn gave a private speech about economics to hundreds of Cambridge University students. Security guards protected entrances to the building, but protesters tried to scale fences at the back of the building and two people were arrested. A Cambridgeshire police spokeswoman said a 19-year-old man had been arrested on suspicion of assaulting a police officer, and a 23-year-old woman was held on suspicion of breaching the peace. It was reported that at least one university building had been defaced. Journalists were forbidden to hear Strauss-Kahn's speech, but the one student who was in the audience told reporters that the French politician and economist had been asked one question about the chambernade incident and told listeners he had been acquitted. More than 750 students had signed a petition calling for the withdrawal of the invitation to Strauss-Kahn to address the society. An open letter published by Cambridge University Student Union Women's Campaign said, numerous charges of attempted rape, sexual assault should give the Union Society pause for thought when administering their speaker invitations. Protesters accused the society of seeking to titillate its members by giving a platform to the former French presidential hopeful banners were hung on Bridge Street building criticizing the visit. A student who took part in the action said, after we discovered he was coming, we wanted to exercise our own freedom of speech as individuals and let the union know what we think. The president of Cambridge Union Society, Katie Lamb, denied the invitation had been made to court controversy. She said, we invited Mr. Strauss-Kahn while he was still head of the IMF and well before the international interests surrounding him. In order for us to be a neutral forum promoting free speech without 
caveats so or conditions, we can't engage in any kind of judgment on people. Strauss Kahn has been invited because of his economic knowledge and experience of French politics, she said. Good Lord, planet revolt. Everybody's losing their mind. Now, moving along, news about our contorting Earth. All kinds of news to go through here. First up, Japan in the headlines again, thanks to Extinction Protocol. This headline, earthquakes in Japan increased five-fold after the March 11, 2011 earthquake. That's wonderful. Uh, more news here. Good Lord, scientists warn that Tokyo uh, could soon be hit by another major earthquake. So heads up in Japan, still shaking and quaking, and it looks like Tokyo is probably going to be the next target. More news from Extinction Protocol. Another Aleutian Island volcano stirs. Lee Emma uh, volcano rumbling. No known eruptions recorded so far, but it is rumbling. All the volcanoes are coming to life. Uh, let's see here. All kinds of stuff. A series of moderate earthquakes rattle the globe. 6.7 has hit in Vanuatu. That, again, thanks to Extinction Protocol. Great resource, by the way. Go and find that. Subscribe. Keep you up to date. Uh, Kamchatka again in the headlines. We were just warned about this the other day. Uh, Kamchatka's Bezi Miani volcano erupts and expels an ash cloud eight kilometers high. This was uh, this morning. Good Lord. Wow. All the volcanoes getting nuts everywhere. And this is uh, kind of disturbing. Remote Pacific Islands slipping below the ocean. Plan launched to relocate the entire population. Fear that climate change could wipe out their entire Pacific archipelago, the leaders of Kiribati are considering an unusual backup plan, moving the populace to Fiji. Kiribati President Anati Tong told the Associated Press on Friday that his cabinet this week endorsed a plan to buy nearly 6,000 acres on Fiji's main island, Viti Levu. He said the fertile land being sold by a church group for about $9.6 million could provide an insurance policy for Kiribati's entire population of 103,000, though he hopes it will never be necessary for everyone to leave. We would hope not to put everyone on one piece of land, but if it became absolutely necessary, yes, we could do it, Tong said. It wouldn't be for me personally, but would apply more to a younger generation. For them, moving don't matter, uh, won't be a matter of choice. It's basically going to be a matter of survival, as the whole island looks like it could go underwater. Outstanding. And now up next, Colombian volcano waking up. Uh, this warning coming from Colombian geologists and again from the Extinction Protocol. The Nevado del Ruiz volcano, whose eruption 26 years ago killed around 25,000 people, is showing signs of activity for nearly uh, 20 years of laying dormant, said Colombian geological group E. Geominus on Thursday, early Friday morning, geologists completed an obs observational flyover with the assistance of the Colombian Air Force, during which they photographed the Nevado del Ruiz volcano and noted ash on the glacier near the crater rim and on the eastern flank, as well as 4,500-foot gas column at the mouth of the volcano. During the same day, a seismic tremor was reported along with an increase in sulfur dioxide emissions. All these factors signal that the volcano is heating up. Located 80 miles west of uh, Bogota, Nevado del Riez is an active volcano that produces pyroclastic flows or swift currents of hot gas and rock that lead to destructive mudslides. There have been numerous eruptions over the centuries, and the most recent was November 13th of 1985. Now, moving along, a little bit of news about our toxic world, and uh, this is old news just coming out, which is horrifying. We're talking about Fukushima. Experts have detected radioactive iodine in the thyroid glands of 80% of the people who used to live near the Fukushima plant. Checkups last April of 65 people who were living near Fukushima plant uh, found radioactive iodine in the thyroid glands of 50 of them. Five had dosages of more than 50 millisieverts, and persons with the highest dosage of 87 millisieverts stayed within 30 kilometers of the Fukushima power plant for more than two weeks. So news is just coming out now. And keep in mind what Obama told you. Nothing was coming here. Complete, utter lie and foolishness. 
Now, moving along to the folder of viruses, plagues, famine, and disease. And this is being labeled as a media blackout. This from Ask Marion, another WordPress blog, on February 23rd, uh, 2012, an Assembly Bill AB 2109 was submitted to the California Legislature by State Assemblyman and Pediatrician Dr. Richard Pan. Uh, will make it harder for parents to refuse to vaccinate their children. The bill was sponsored by California Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the California Immunization Coalition. Right now in California, if a child is enrolled in school, their parents are legally required to have them vaccinated. However, exemptions may be obtained by parents who object for religious or philosophical reasons if they sign the portion of the immunization record that says immunizations are contrary to their belief and that they understand that in the case of an outbreak, a vaccine-preventable disease that the child may be temporarily excluded from attending school or child care institutions for his or her protection. If Bill AB 2109 passes by July 1, 2013, parents who wish to opt out will be required to bring them on the day of enrollment with a written statement from a medical doctor or conventional health practitioner that states they have been informed of the benefits and risk of vaccines and the communicable diseases they are said to prevent. The parent would also be required to submit a written statement that indicates that he or she received the information from the healthcare practitioner. Uh, as first reported by Dr. Tim O'Shea in February 23rd, if the, if the bill is passed, would require parents to obtain the signature of a healthcare practitioner for a personal beliefs religious exemption. My question is, what the hell do the doctors know about religion and personal beliefs? This is ridiculous. Good Lord. Now, moving along, another one of my favorite categories. It's the weekly pot news. This thanks to normal.org. Over two dozen controlled trials demonstrate cannabinoids' statistically significant pain-relieving effects. Cannabis and its active constituents appear to be safe and modestly effective treatments in patients suffering from a variety of chronic pain conditions, including neuropathy, uh, according to a literature review to be published in the Clinical Journal of Pain. An investigator from New York University Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation conducted a PubMed search to survey the percentage of positive and negative published randomized control trials accessing cannabinoids as treatment for pain. Of the 56 hits generated, 38 published RCTs met inclusion criteria. Of these, 71% concluded that ca cannabinoids had empirically demonstrable and statistically significant pain relieving effects, whereas 29% did not. Cannabinoids appeared to be the most effective in treating hard to treat neuropathic pain conditions for notorious difficult to treat conditions such as HIV neuropathy, uh, cannabinergic pain medicines, particularly inhaled cannabinoid botanicals, are one of the only treatments that have been shown to be safe and effective with a high level of evidence, the review states. Five to 10% of the U.S. population is estimated to suffer from neuropathic pain at some point during their lives. The study concludes overall, based on the existing clinical trial database, cannabinergic Benergic plain medicines have been shown to be modestly effective in safe treatments in patients with a variety of chronic pain conditions. Incorporating uh, the medicine topics into pain medicine, education seems to be warranted, and continuing clinical research and empirical treatment trials are appropriate. So, uh, one more post here from normal.org. And this time, uh, again, the government's crackdown on medicinal cannabis is not unconstitutional. A federal judge rules. A federal judge in Sacramento last week dismissed a federal lawsuit filed in November by members of Normal Legal Committee against the U.S. Department of Justice, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, and DEA Director Michael Leonhardt. The lawsuit, one of four filed simultaneously in the state's four federal district, argues that the Justice Department's ongoing crackdown against medical marijuana providers and distributors in California is in violation of the 9th, 10th, and 14th Amendments to the U.S. Constitution because use of cannabis therapeutically is a fundamental right. Petitioners also argue, using the theory of judicial estoppel, that the Justice Department has previously affirmed in public memos 
and in statements made in federal court that it would no longer use federal resources to prosecute cannabis patients or providers who are compliant with state law. On Wednesday of last week, U.S. District Judge Garland Burrell Jr. rejected those arguments and granted the respondent's dismissal of a motion. He denied petitioner's request for a public hearing prior to making his ruling. So you see, uh, still, the federal government wants to torment people uh, for using a plant. Okay, this is how ridiculous we have become. And now, last but not least, the ever lulzical hacker news. Hackers are always doing something. First thing up uh, from Homeland Security Newswire, NASA officials say hackers gained full functional control. Last week, NASA officials de disclosed details about the alarming extent that hackers were able to pen penetrate the agency's networks. Uh, testifying before Congress, Paul Martin, NASA's inspector general, said the agency networks were targeted 47 times by sophisticated attacks, and of those attempts, 13 were successful. More troublingly, during the attacks, hackers gained full functional control of critical NASA networks, including the International Space Station. In addition, one attack originating from China last November resulted in the complete loss of control of critical systems and employee accounts at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Hackers gained full system access, including the ability to modify, copy, and delete sensitive files, as well as upload malicious code for further attacks. The hackers stole 150 personal credentials, and the attack is still under investigation. Meanwhile, another breach occurred last March when the unencrypted NASA computer containing algorithms to control the International Space Station was stolen. The agency maintains that the space station was not in danger. NASA is frequently targeted by hackers as it is seen of one of the most prestigious technological labs in the United States. And for state-sponsored hackers and criminals, the agency's vulnerable strategic information is highly prized. As a result, NASA spends nearly one-third of its $1.5 billion IT budget on cybersecurity. Yet Martin noticed noted in his testimony that only 1% of the agency's portable devices and laptops are encrypted. These unencrypted devices, as evidenced by the space station attack, contain treasure troves of critical information, as well as other passwords that can lead to future attacks. Between April 2009 and April 2011, nearly 50 unencrypted devices were stolen, compromising data from NASA's Constellation and Orion programs, as well as personal data like employees' social security numbers. Furthermore, Martin admitted that the agency did not move quickly enough to prevent hackers from exploiting credentials after the devices were stolen. The Inspector General's testimony also revealed that last year the agency detected more than 5,408 incidents of malicious software or unauthorized access of its computer, which cost NASA more than seven million dollars. Moving along, this from the hackernews.com, Albania this time in the headlines. Albania is the most malware infected nation. Researchers at security firms Norman and Microsoft analyzed data from their security products that Albania is the most malware infected nation with 65 percent of scanned computers reporting infections. Uh, most infected countries are South Korea, Guatemala, Vietnam, Indonesia, Argentina, Thailand, Georgia, the Philippines, Algeria, Venezuela, Lithuania, and Pakistan, according to the Norman report. And then last up, this from the BBC. Anti-sec hackers hit U.S. police store after FBI arrest. Hackers identifying themselves with the Anisec movement have attacked the site of a company that sells equipment to U.S. law enforcers, such as the police. The message posted over New York Ironworks homepage said it was a tribute to Jeremy Hammond. Mr. Hammond had been accused of being involved in an attack on the think tank Stratfor last year and was arrested in Chicago on Monday. These marks, uh, this marks the second breach explicitly linked to the FBI's swoop. The Bureau has also charged five other men with computer crimes, including Lulzex leader Hector Xavier Monsarga, known as Sabu, who helped officers with the crackdown after pleading guilty to 12 criminal acts. Earlier this week, Anisec attacked the website of the Spanish firm Panda Security, accusing it of helping police arrest other members of Anonymous, the name given to the wider hacktivist campaign. 
The firm denied the allegation. Those responsible for the latest attack signaled that they intended to continue their campaign. We will fight till the end, the message said. To the FBI, you have our logs. We have all those PMs in private chats you don't want to make public. Anti-Sec is still alive and well. We refuse to let some snitch divert us from our path in life. New York Ironworks sells gun lasers, pepper spray holders, and tactical clothing. Its Facebook page said it has spent well over a decade earning the respect of police officers in and around New York. A spokesperson for the company told BBC that he had no comment on the matter. That is the news. That is the mayhem. Good Lord, we made it through the week. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. I will be back with you Monday again at 10 p.m. Make sure you're here tomorrow starting at 6 p.m. for Free Your Mind Our Style with host The Memory Maker and D-Man, and then continuing on at 8 o'clock with our host David Rathbone of The Perilous Earth. Until then, we will be going to a rebroadcast of the Republic Broadcast Network. Have a safe and happy weekend, everybody.